Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, Shemika Horadam watercolors, and I have 12 colors here that I actually put into a little mint tin. I just picked this tin up at uh, Spirit of Halloween. I thought it was so cute. It had mints in it that were really awful, mystifying mints. The mystery is, where's the mint flavor? They were just the most blaring like little bits of chalk, or they were awful. But anyways, I love the tin, so I spray painted the inside white, and I just put these little half pans in there with magnets on the bottom. And uh, this is the color swatched out. I swatched them out when I was filling those pans. Uh, I filled those pans about two weeks ago and they're still not completely hard yet, but uh, but I really wanted to paint with these and see how they went. I did this quick three minute sketch here of a little mason jar with some flowers in it just off the top of my head. And I thought it was time to do an actual painting. So since it is fall and um, actually yesterday I spent the day um, kayaking. It was just so nice outside. I thought I would do a fall landscape. I'm actually using a photo that I will link down below that's uh, from Paint My Photo and uh, you can you can check that out. I'll uh, put the uh, photographer credits in the video description as well. Um, I'm just starting off with a horizon line, just drawing kind of a little bit of a creek, uh, putting in some rocks. Not going to put too much in with a sketch here. Just want to get a few areas kind of uh, portioned off. I got a tree I want to come in over here and um, a row of trees over there. Maybe a big big tree over there. So nothing major, just a very super light sketch. And I also picked up some new brushes when I was uh, out yesterday. We went to um, went to Belfast and I thought I found this little art supply store called Fiddleheads and I thought well, I'm gonna try that out so I've got this ultramarine here their ultramarine is kind of funny um, they use PB15 and PB29 mixed together instead of just um, straight PB29 I'm just going right on to the um, dry paper with that this is a large Zen round and these were these brushes are retail four bucks you can't beat that for a brush that big. Um, I haven't seen that many online stores carrying them, but I have seen like the big brick and mortar stores carrying them. And this was an independent store that was carrying them. So um, you might have to get them on like the Royal and Lang Nickel website if you are interested in those. I get some pretty granulation in there, which isn't surprising because it does have the um, ultramarine blue coloring. And I'm also gonna grab some of that color and put some in my stream while I'm at it. I also grabbed a um, a dagger brush because I wanted to uh, to try painting watercolors with it. I've seen some like urban sketchers doing a lot with dagger brushes, and I think it's really it looks like a really versatile brush. So I thought I would give that a try. And I feel like there's also a little bit more of a cooler blue in this um, scene here. So I am going to grab um, some of the Helio Cerulean. And I will list all the colors that I have in my little set. Um, and I do want to disclose that I had mentioned that I really wanted to try these paints, uh, but I just couldn't justify the price. And a lovely viewer actually reached out to um, the German company, Schminka, on my behalf and um, and requested and asked if they would send me some, and they did. And it was very kind of them. And I appreciate that from uh, both the viewer and... Um, and the company. So I'm just getting some of these colors in. I know I'm going to put some more rocks in here, so I don't want to go too crazy with the color. I just want to kind of get that down. Now I'm going to do kind of like a mountain in the distance. Now this holds tons of water, so I didn't need to pre-wet my paper. Um, I'm going to mix, I think I'll use a little bit of this brilliant purple, which is kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a magenta. It's so bright. Uh, and I'm going to go with uh, some of the ultramarine. Mix it together, get a kind of a soft purpley color, and just kind of go off up against the, the sky, kind of. I just want a fuzzy, out of focus, um, a mountain in the background. I'm going to drag it across a little bit. And soften that edge on the bottom so that I can do some, some trees. This is almost like a sponge. It's super, super absorbent. These are the Zen brushes by Royal and Lane Nicole. Now I think I will switch over to that, um, to the dagger I was telling you about. I bought two sizes. I bought um, one really big one and one fairly big one. So I've got a 3 8 or, or 10 millimeter and a half inch dagger. I've used these for acrylic painting before with the, you know, more stiffer synthetic bristles, but I haven't used the faux um, animal bristles before. So I'm gonna grab some of this um, Cad Yellow Light. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the um, cerulean 
oops, I should have wiped my brush off first. We have a nice vivid color here, and I'm just gonna go right in here, just drag some of that up. I think I'm gonna like this brush because I like uh, brushes that come to a fine point, but it can also carry quite a bit of paint and water. And this is gonna be a very loose, quick painting too, by the way, I don't want you to, uh, to go expecting a masterpiece. Although I have to say, I actually often like quicker paintings. I like the freshness of them more than um, a lot of really thought out paintings. And I'm gonna blot off some of this. I love how the colors granulate. It reminds me a lot of Daniel Smith like how their paints kind of have that granulation. Um, I'm working on a very inexpensive paper. This is uh, just a Strathmore 400, not very inexpensive. I would say kind of like upper end student quality paper. Um, you can find that at most um, different craft stores. So I think now what I'm gonna do is work on some of the foliage back there. And I'm actually gonna clean out that little area where I got some yellow in there and just kind of throw that on my palette. The colors are very strong. I highly recommend that you squeeze them into pans or a palette. Let them dry. Um, if you want to use them right away, just put like a little drop, like maybe on the side of a plate or something. A full, like a, a filling up a pan is going to take a long time for that to dry. But I would do that just because it's such a strong paint. And, um, and I think you might end up wasting some otherwise if you just work right from the right from the uh, pans. I think I want to make um, some nice orange, so I'm going to go and grab some of that scarlet red. I kind of wish that I had like a um, like a crimson, because um, that, that brilliant purple color is just so magenta, and actually that one, I was looking through their big brochure of colors, and that one didn't have a um, pigment information, or like maybe had pigment information it did have pigment information, it didn't have light fast information. It's PR81 colon two. Um, I know PR83 is very fugitive, so I don't know, that's probably, it's such a bright color that I tend to think it's probably uh, a little on the fugitive side. But you know what? I got these for free and I can definitely go and invest in some and I probably will do that because I, I really like these. Um, not that I need any more paint, I mean, let's be honest here, but uh, but these are really lovely. And the reason I'm going into this wet area where I've got the mountain colors in there too is because I want my colors further away from my eyes to be duller. Uh, so that's, so when I when I want that effect, that's what I do. So I want a nice dull green. So I'm taking the ultramarine and mixing that with, a, with that yellow and it's giving me a real murky dark. And that's what I want for far away. So the thing is with our beautiful colors, and I was noticing this out last night or yesterday in the kayak is that um, the, in order for things to be bright and contrasted, we need the neutrals to make it bright. So we need that contrast. Okay. So that's why I want to do that. Um, I was just thinking I would put some yellow ochre in there, but you know, I am looking at my reference photo. I don't really have any yellow ochre in there. So I don't think I will add it after all. And I do, I like to stick with the limited palette. So I won't use all, all the 12 colors in here. And I think I'll do, and I wouldn't have to rinse my brush so much if these colors were completely solid. And since I don't really think I'm gonna grab some burnt sienna, I think I'll take a little bit of that scarlet red and add it into my ultramarine. I could mix in the tin, that's why I spray painted it. But, um, but I got this nice, I like a big mixing area. So um, that's a scarlet in the ultramarine, just to make a kind of a wine purple color. Um, but I like having, having that plate. It's just a Dollar Tree plate. I almost bought, I was at this place. Oh my gosh, I'm kicking myself. So when we were out on our adventure, my, the kids all had planes camping over the weekend. So my husband and I, uh, had a weekend to ourselves, which was delightful. And, um, we went to Belfast after we were done kayaking and found this place called T Captain Tinkham's Emporium, which is like this all, this is a junk shop. And, um, I, this they this a uh, jar it was like a like a jelly jar full of old keys and I picked it up I'm like oh I'm gonna get these it was four dollars and then I thought well this is foolish I should put I don't know what I'm gonna use this for so I put it back and then this morning I had this great idea to like take a tray and fill it with resin and keys and it would just make the coolest thing and I kicked myself because I didn't buy it I had like faults I had like uh, cold feet cold frugal feet yesterday 
I was like, oh, that's just going to sit on my shelf forever. I'll never use it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get it. And then totally regretted that. Have you guys ever done that? That ever happened to you? Okay. So now I am going to, I just love the granulation in there. So now I'm going to move down here. I think I'm going to actually dry it real quick. I'm going to pause it while I dry this. Let's dry. I'm going to mix up some dark. I'm doing the ultramarine blue and the scarlet. I'm going to grab some of that yellow that I had. Need some more blue. These brushes do add a lot of water into the mix. So just kind of keep that in mind um, as you're working because you might end up with colors that are a lot lighter than you anticipated. Uh, a little bit more blue. And I want to go in and I want to add a couple tree trunks in here just so I can kind of figure out where I'm going to end up with my, uh, with my trees. Oh, this brush is so nice for doing branches. Oh, it's just like you can't get too fussy of a branch, which I really like. I think I may actually go in with some brown because I feel like, I feel like I am working way too hard to get a, to get a dark brown. So I'm going to do the uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of yellow, of, uh, of ultramarine blue. Cause I'll want that for the rocks too. So I am going to go in and do that. Look at that, man, just making branches with this brush is fun. And I think I'm also going to use this, maybe a little bit more blue and do some of the shadows on some of these rocks and also put in some new rocks. This is a cold pressed paper, so it has a bit of a um, tooth to it so I can kind of catch the, the roughness of the paper when I use the edge of it like that. It's kind of a neat effect. A bunch of rocks on the edge of the uh, stream. I can turn my brush and the thing I think that's that's really nice about this for plein air work or landscape work is that you really get a random line. So you, especially if you kind of want to fuss and control everything completely, it kind of breaks, it can break you of that. And grab the ultramarine, the smudgy ultramarine from the top where I had my burnt sienna on it. Scrape off what I can so my brush isn't too wet, then go in and grab some. Cause I hate to rinse away all that beautiful paint every time. And now I can go on the tip of this and uh, define the edges. I don't want everything to have a hard edge. I want some lost and found edges here. Some cracks in the rocks. And I can put a few rocks up over here. Rocks can really have lots of different colors in them. You know, they really should just kind of be a little bit neutral, but you can get pretty much any color that you've been using in your landscape. You can work into it. And I apologize for any noises you might hear during this. This is a, uh, the kids had a long weekend and I didn't even know if I was going to get a video up at all this weekend. So, uh, so, you know, it's a real, real life, real life house here. All right. I'm going to make some more of that bright green. So I'm going to go into my brighter yellow. This is the cad yellow light and some more of that scarlet red. Wait a minute. Why am I doing that? Well, I'll need that too. So <laughs> I was going to make green, but I made orange instead. And you probably can't even see that because it's off screen. There we go. Um, and so let's try that again. <laughs> let's do our yellow and let's do some of the uh, cerulean, which is actually more of like a phthalo. Uh, blue, it's PB15 colon three, which is what you would, you know, be used to with the phthalo blue. And let's do some of that in here as well. A little bit more yellow in there. I really like this brush. If you have a hard time loosening up, um, I recommend trying one of these. I want to go in behind that tree with that same color so I don't end up with any white paper lurking in there. I think I'll pick up some of this orangey color just so I end up with a murky kind of dark in the background. So we're going to go into some brighter colors and I need to have a little bit of contrast in there. Can always redefine our trees later. And then I think I'm going to go in with a scarlet on its own over here. 
tap in some, let's go on the tip. Tap in a nice bright tree back here. It's a little tricky doing landscapes in watercolor when you want to layer different uh, portions in the foreground and background because you have all these, you have to always consider what's in front because you can't, if you want something lighter in front, you can't really paint over it unless you want to mask ahead of time, which I don't really like to mask that much. I like how this cadmium, even though it looks very lemon, it's quite neutral and I can mix a nice bright orange with it. That's kind of, kind of cool. And then I think I'll do this big orange tree in the front. And get that kind of, let's kind of get some branches that are kind of just coming out and up at an angle. And we'll fill in a little bit afterwards. Let me get that in there. Maybe I'll switch to that bigger dagger and see how that works. It's nice to try a different brush. If, you, if you're if you um, kind of feeling a little bored with what you've been doing, sometimes just try adding a different color, adding a different brush can make all the difference. This does hold so much. Ooh, I like that. I like how that color is kind of blending into the other colors that I have there. I'm going to go as if the uh, trunk of this is kind of like right off the edge of the page. This is a fun brush. Okay, and now I think I might drip in some of that dark color with the Brant Sienna and Ultramarine. A little bit of that in there, just let it kind of spill through in the shadows. Grab a little, uh, let's do a nice earthy deep green by taking that ultramarine. We'll take some of that cerulean too. And then we'll take some of the um, same yellow that we've been using. Let's just grab some more stuff off this palette because I want it kind of dark and I feel like I've added way too much water. And I want to add uh, another little tree in here. Kind of tuck it right in there. And I think I want that darker so, and I think I'm getting too much water so I'm going to grab a smaller round brush and I'm going to mix up some nice deep a uh, bright dark green. Grab a little bit of that red in there. A little more blue. Ultramarine to kind of deepen it and dull it down and then we'll add some of that in there. Into the wet paint, let it kind of flow out. And define that front tree a little bit by getting the edges. And then I can add some of that behind some of those rocks. This is my mint, one of the mimic brushes. The bristles are very similar. I feel like these are a little bit snappier, but um, but they work well together. They're nice to have together. All right, now for this guy over here, we're gonna do some more of those orange. Um, orange branches, orange leaves rather, can tap some on actually, I like to tap it on, I splatter it on rather, and then tap some on. So you have that kind of combination of splatter and detail. And don't worry, I'm gonna deal with that in a, in a bit, I know that's a little disconcerting. Oh, with some nice bright red do. Turn that brush, some nice uh, odd random leaves there. <clears throat> we'll, we'll redo the branches in a bit, so don't worry about that. 
And now I am going to just kind of grab some of this gray Merc off my palette. And I'm going to glaze on some of the rocks. I think I'll throw a few rocks in through here where I have this white area. Basically, I don't want, uh, I want to give the rocks a little color and character. I just want them to be white holes in the paper. And I also want some more deeper watercolor. So I'm going to go grab the cerulean and also some of the ultramarine. Okay, because I've used both of those colors so far. And I'm going to pull um, some of that water water coloring into the side over here where I kind of had that white area. Gonna add some of this under some of these rocks. Give it that nice um, depth. Put more of the ultramarine in there, get a little more purpley. Give it some movement in the water just by moving your brush back and forth. Gives it little ripples. Okay, and now we're gonna have to let this dry before we can put any details of branches and finish it up, but we're almost done. <clears throat> okay, oh, sorry, sorry for clearing my throat there. Uh, so I'm gonna take a little bit of the, uh, the cerulean and lemon, or cad yellow light rather, and I'm going to throw in this brighter burst of color back there, the end of the creek. I feel like I need a little more glaze of that there. I'll brighten it up as I come forward, as the sun's hitting things. Get those nice pops of color. And really, I mean, you don't have that much time to put a lot of detail in when you are painting out in nature. You just try to catch the impressions of the colors as you see them. And I am going to redefine my branches here. You can use the dagger brush. I just have this one right in my hand already, so I'm just gonna use this to thicken up a few of the branches. I don't want them all really dark. I want them kind of lost and found. Just throw a few in. And then just some more um, work on the rocks. Give them a little more substance. They, they're solid. Everything else is kind of moving and flowing, the water's flowing, the trees are blowing in the breeze. We want the rocks to be kind of solid so we have that contrast. And I think I want a little bit more um, definition in the water. I'm just pulling it, mixing into that gray that I had from the Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. I'm doing the uh, Ultramarine Blue and the Cerulean, which is a Thalo Blue, same pigments as Thalo. And I'm just going to add little shadows at the bottom of the rocks and pull out some movement that way. And uh, I just love how bright these colors are. Even though some of these colors are mixes, I find they're still extremely vibrant and I'm not getting mud unless I'm trying to mix it on purpose. And um, I just feel like the color payoff with this is, is excellent. These are more expensive than a lot of other watercolors um, in the United States. It might be different wherever you live, uh, but I've wanted to try these for a long time and I'm so uh, pleased that I got a chance to. Um, I'll put a link to the Schmico website on uh, in the video description so you can check them out if you want to learn a little bit more. I highly recommend checking them out. Uh, I plan on getting a few more colors. I'm gonna splash in some other colors in here because I just like that, uh, like the movement of that. Maybe dab in a little 
some yellow back there just to give it a little brightness but you know take your time on it if you want to mask out things and um do that you totally can it would be gorgeous but i just wanted to show you a quick demonstration with the schmika watercolors so you can kind of get an idea of how they work and um i just love my little tin i did do a little mixing in the lid there uh but i'll wipe that out before i close it just a fun way to kind of keep your paints i put little magnets on the bottom of my pans and i also wrote the pigment composition on the um on the pans themselves just so I would know as I was working. So bottom line, I would look at the uh, colors that they offer and see if it's more economical to buy them in tubes or buy the sets. I've seen some good deals on Amazon on these um, if you are looking to purchase them. But as always, use what you have. You can totally paint this with whatever you have. I just wanted to show and review the Schmincke watercolors. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and share this video if you have other friends that would like this. And uh, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.